Welcome back to the channel, everybody. I am Brian Lee Durfee, author of The Forgetting Moon and The Blackest Heart, both published by Simon & Schuster Saga Press. Today, we're going to be reviewing a Star Wars Legends novel, Kenobi by John Jackson Miller. You know, if you followed my channel, my guilty pleasure reads are the Star Wars Legends novels. I got the whole grip of them back here on the shelf, and we're doing we're rereading them all. And I am doing rereading Kenobi now. We always talk about the covers first, so let's get to Kenobi. This was done by an illustrator named Chris McGrath. It looks like sort of a photoshopped thing of the actor Ewan McGregor with a lightsaber. Eh, you know, it's okay. It's good enough. It's, uh, you know, Ewan McGregor played Obi-Wan Kenobi in the prequel trilogy, right? It's all right. This book is also signed by the author to me. You know, I always get my books signed by the authors if I meet them, and John Jackson Miller is one of the regular authors that signs at Bard's Tower and all the Comic-Cons when... And I, I'm one of the regular authors that signs books at the Bard's Tower also, so I run into this guy often. I got him to sign my Kenobi book. Dope! Dope! Because this book is freaking awesome. This book is like Star Wars and a Western novel combined. I want to read you. This, is, this book starts out in Anchorhead at, on, on Tatooine, Kenobi, Ben Kenobi, has little baby Luke Skywalker with him, and he's trying to find Uncle Owen and Aunt Beru. And he's wandering around looking for Uncle Owen and Aunt Beru, so he can give little Luke away to them. And he he's kind of like this drifter on Tatooine. And he there's this bar in Anchorhead, a saloon, and, and, and stuff goes down. Bad stuff goes down in the saloon, right? And uh, we've got Galt, and we've got the... Um, Tuscan Raiders, we've got some bad guys, some Jabba the Hutt people, some henchmen of Jabba the Hutt, and things are going bad in the saloon, and like Clint Eastwood, the man with no name, Obi-Wan Kenobi drifts into the bar with his lightsaber and a baby in, and he the baby Luke with him, and he sets things straight in the bar. Just like in a rest western movie, you know, where the man with no name, the gunslinger, comes in and <clears throat> takes care of business. And that's kind of the tone of the book. This is really like a Western novel set in the Star Wars universe. I actually wanted to read a section of this novel because John Jackson Miller is channeling his inner Louis L'Amour with his writing. I mean, the passage I'm going to read you could come straight out of a Louis L'Amour novel. And that's I mean, and I really appreciated the fact that this read like an old Zane Grey book or an old Louis L'Amour. I'm going to read you this passage, and if you're familiar with Louis L'Amour's westerns, you're going to recognize the voice. This is a western voice all the way around. It was nice to reach a point in life where people did what you said, and on Tatooine, where the people were born cursed and nobody took orders from anyone else, it meant even more. The danger was past. For the first time since re receiving the distress signal, Oren took a deep breath and pondered the barren land below. Straight out of a western. Oren! The guy's name is Oren! Straight out of a western. He'd been born on a farm just like this, far from the nearest way station, nearly 50 standard years earlier. And even now, there was no place he'd rather be in the morning than on the range. People thought he was crazy for that. Everyone he'd ever met preferred the evening with its relief from the heat. But once the suns were gone and the air settled on you like some dead and heavy, something dead and heavy, you had to get underground. Nothing good happened after dark. With the Tuscan Raiders and who knows what else on the prowl, mornings, meanwhile, were like getting out of jail. Or so Oren imagined. On Tatooine, you might... Over, you might be an overnighter no better than a womp rat in a hole, but you'd better become human the second you stepped outside. And then there was the little stretch between first and second sun, 
when the cold night wind would kick at last and the planet itself would sigh. Good water prospectors love, lived for these moments, when the precious drops that had birthed in the night suddenly realized you were onto them and fled. A smart farmer like Oren could smell them and follow them, and it was, po impo and it was possible to follow them, because in daylight nothing could stop you, not in these, this region, not anymore. I did a shit job of reading that, but had somebody that was really talented at reading read this to you, you would have thought that's exactly like a Lemo Louis L'Amour Western. So who is Oren? Oren Galt. He's this homesteader. And he's got a family. And initially, he's kind of like, he seems like a good guy, but you kind of see that he's, he runs his farm more like he runs a group of henchmen, like a mafia guy. And, he's, and then there's the Huts, Jabba the Hut. And then there's the Tusken Raiders. And there's the Jawas. And there's everything else about Tatooine that we loved. You know, Gal Oren Galt and his family are on this homestead. And they're moisture farmers, like Uncle Owen and Aunt Beru. And uh, they run afoul of, just like in any Louis L'Amour Western, they run afoul of people that want their land, want their farm, uh, just cattle rustlers, although they're not cattle, they're other things. You know, the Jawas, everything that's great about Tatooine, everything we love about Tatooine. You know, we've got the, you know, we've got the Sarlacc pits, we've got the Jabba the Hut and the Huts, we've got sand people and Jawas, heat and sand and saloons full of bad guys and all of those dangerous things that are on Tatooine. And Oren has to navigate his life and his family about this. And this book is more about Oren Galt and his family and their relationship to um, the uh, Annaline and her son, Jabe. Uh, and Jabe is kind of dating one of Oren's daughters. And so there's a lot of family drama. And we're, we're like, well, where's Kenobi? Why is, Kenobi, why is it even called Kenobi if 75% of the book is about this family living a Louis L'Amour Western type life on the deserts of Tatooine. Well, because Kenobi is like the Clint Eastwood, he's like the man with no name that just sort of rides into town, paints everything red, kicks everyone's ass, and then leaves. And he's kind of like this drifter. Like, well, he was a drifter in Star Wars. You know, Luke found him as a drifter, as, as just like a, a guy out in the wilderness, you know, living his own life in a hut. And that's the way he is, but he helps these families. And there's sort of a little bit of a love interest between Kenobi and Annaline. And, um, but, you know, that's, it's, it's really, really great. I just loved everything about this book. It's probably one of my favorite Star Wars Legends books, Kenobi. Uh, I mean, I, I don't know what else to say about it other than that's the basic plot. Homesteaders. Things go wrong between the bad guys who were generally Jabba the Hutt's henchmen and the sand people. Oh, and there's a sand, sand, a Yark, one of my favorite characters in the Star Wars Legends, a Yark, the Tusken Raider, who's also known as Plug Eye. Why is he known as Plug Eye? Because he's missing his eye and he's got a red gemstone jammed into his Tusken Raider rap thing. Eh. Anyway. I pictured it really vividly in my head. I probably did the, the disservice to the description of Mr. Yark, the Tusken Raider. Anyway, there's a lot of, there's actually, there's a short book, but a lot of characters and a lot of action and a lot of things going on in this. And, you know, it's mostly about the family and Kenobi sort of drifting in and out. You know, he doesn't, Kenobi doesn't want to really use his lightsaber because, you know, Jedi are hunted at this point. And uh, he, so he uses the lightsaber sparingly, even though it's right there on the cover. Because he doesn't want people to know he's a Jedi. But, you know, they're starting to figure it out. Anyway, good book. Good book. I give, I give Kenobi a 9.5 out of 10. I think it's one of the better Star Wars Legends books. And it was written exceptionally well. Just because he, this guy was really trying to make this sound and read like a... A, a western novel like an old zane gray western I, really really good really good